Hey guys, I'm Andrew McComb and welcome to Web3 TV. In today's video, I'm with Jeremy Britton, founder and CEO of Boston Trading Co., the world's first cryptocurrency mutual fund. And we're going to discuss how the Boston Trading Co. became the world's first cryptocurrency mutual fund. But before we do, make sure you register to watch every episode of Web3 TV here, where we share inspiring stories of all things Web3, making a difference to the world. All sorted? Okay, let's go and meet Jeremy. Jeremy, you're the Chief Financial Officer and co-founder of Boston Trading Co., the world's first diversified crypto mutual fund. You're also a wealth coach, a best-selling author and keynote speaker in holistic wealth and the business space. And you've also got a passion for accelerated learning and NLP. Or for the viewers who are not familiar with that, it's neuro-linguistic neuro program, programming. How did this incredible journey actually begin? My God, you make me sound really interesting. <laughs> I'm going to get you to introduce me to people at parties. That's fantastic. Um, but the way, way, way back story is my parents are both school teachers. Uh, they loved to practice on us when we were kids. So before I even went to school, I knew my colors and my numbers and all that sort of stuff. So I used to think I was smart when I was at school because I was maybe 12 months ahead of the other kids in the class. And that's, again, you know, thanks to my parents because they just loved education and, and teaching people things. It was only after I left school that I realized how dumb I was because, you know, when you're in school, you're mixing with your peers, right, all the time. And you're mixing with employees. Like I had a job working flipping burgers. Um, you know, my, my teachers who taught me, they were employees. They were paid to be there. My friends were employees. My friends' parents were employees. I didn't meet anyone who was a business owner or entrepreneur until I was like you know, 18, 19 years old. And some of these guys had actually like, literally dropped out of school when they were 14 or 15 because they weren't good at school. They were very good with their hands. And you know, some of them owned car yards or they owned cabinet shops and they owned buildings and, and things like this because they were very, very good with their hands. And I'm like, I'm really dumb. I've educated my brain so much and thought that I was good until I came out of the playground and realized that there's people out there who are not as educated as me, but they're really doing well in the world and winning the game of life because, you know, the guys who own their own companies, they don't need to be clocking on at nine in the morning. They don't need to be there locking up at five o'clock in the afternoon. They're having a life. So I went on a very, very steep learning curve when I was 19. And I was lucky enough to be mentored by guys who worked in the financial services industry. And they started teaching me things that they'd learned, things they wish they, they had known when they were 19 years old and learning from the people that they'd learned from. And that's the great thing about, you know, education is you can keep going back. You can read the old, old books that were around back then. You can read the old stock charts that were around back then and say, when this happened, this happened. When this happened, this happened. And realistically, financial services are not that exciting. There's either the interest rates are going up or the interest rates are going down. The government's either good or the government's bad. There's either a war on or there's not a war on. And because those things have occurred thousands of times throughout human history, you can see what happened to the stock price, you know, in the year 1700 when there was a war with the French and the British. Or you can have a look at what the housing prices was doing in the year 1400 because, the, you know, the Dutch government had put the interest rates down. So... By looking at these things and saying, I'm smart enough to recognize a pattern. I'm smart enough to see that when this happens throughout history, 80% of the time, this happened. It's not, it's not exact science, but 80% of the time, when the copper price is going down, the stock market is going to follow within a year. You know, When the repo market spikes, 80% of the time, the stock market's going to go down within a year. So I started teaching other people the things that I was learning from my mentors and other people who didn't know about this thought that I was a genius, like I'd made all this shit up, you know, and I could predict the future, but all I was doing is looking at the past and going, here's an educated guess. So when I wrote my first book in 2006, I said, there's a big stock market crash coming because America is giving all these loans, what they call the ninja loans, people with no assets, no jobs, no income. 
and the you know the subprime market was absolutely out of control and people were trying to cover it up but you could see the figures on their books if you knew how to read financial statements so i was telling people there's going to be a big stock market crash of course no one wanted to hear that because when everything's going wonderfully well on the titanic and everybody's eating their dinner if you're screaming iceberg you're not very popular but the moment after the proverbial hits the fan all of a sudden i started to sell more books Two years later, I started to appear on radio shows and TV shows and this sort of stuff, and people actually started to listen to me, but they didn't listen to me before. And when I said there's a, a big crash coming in 2020, this was six months before the pandemic, six months before the disease had even escaped from the lab. But we were looking at the financial things and going, okay, this is what happens. Copper price, repo, you know, short-term collections. This is what happens before a stock market crash because stock market crashes happen every seven to 10 years. And if you know what to look for, you can know when they're going to occur. Great time to buy, great time to make money, sometimes a good time to step back. So my, my background is very strong in education. Thanks mum and dad for being school teachers. But I needed to play in a bigger field where people actually create their own destiny. And that's where I've started to operate and to balance out my left brain analytical mathematical mind. I started doing the NLP and hypnotherapy and meditation and lots of fun stuff like that. So fantastic. And so you've evolved from wealth education and obviously it continues on to today, but you've now into the cryptocurrency space. Tell us a little bit about that and how you got involved. Uh, when I, I was first introduced to cryptocurrency in 2012. So very early days of Bitcoin, I think Bitcoin was about $6 or $3 or something back then. And a good friend of mine who's a financial planner, he said, you should look at this digital currency, going to change the world. You'll understand it. And I looked at it and I didn't understand it. I didn't actually get it. I was looking like, it's, it's kind of like emailing money, but we can already do that because I have internet banking. Um, so <laughs> to my discredit, I looked at Bitcoin in 2012 and went, I don't understand it. It's not for me. But a couple of years later, someone, I was actually chatting to someone, and we've got staff in like Philippines and India and Indonesia and Africa, and I'm sending money transfers to these guys. Some of them have bank accounts, some of them don't. Bank transfer was costing me $30. If they didn't have a bank account, I'd have to send Western Union, and they got to go into Western Union with their, with their driver's license or their photo ID and have cash and the Western Union money transfer was costing $70 for cash, you know, cash to cash. Um, and this other friend of mine said, oh, why don't you just use Bitcoin? And I said, I've heard of Bitcoin. What does it do? And he said, oh, you just email money to people and the fee is 50 cents. You can send 10,000 to someone and it costs you 50 cents. And I went, oh, that sounds simple. I wish I'd known that, <laughs> forgetting that my friend had told me about it years before, but didn't explain it that well. So I started then buying Bitcoin and using it like e literally emailing money to, to the other side of the planet to pay our staff. And every month I'd go onto a website and I'd buy some Bitcoin, then I'd, I'd send it off. And after a while, because back in the early days, the, the websites were dodgy. They were, they were sort of very dodgy, very sort of handmade. And so I thought, I'll just buy a whole bunch of Bitcoin in one go, because I'm not sure about giving this guy my credit card details. I'll just buy a whole bunch in one go and that's less transactions. And that just happened to be the time when Bitcoin really started to take off and went from $1,000 up to $20,000. And Ethereum had just come out, like 2015. And so my, my friend who told me about the Bitcoin, he was like, oh, you should get into this Ethereum. They're doing this and they're doing this. It's not just a payment network. It's smart contracts. It's going to put real estate agents and conveyances and solicitors out of business. And like, I love advancing technology and you know, getting rid of the dinosaurs. So I started to look at that and there was a few other projects coming out. And when I saw like 15 projects at once, I went, oh, this is just the stock market. That's what it is. You know, it's just little, little different companies that you can compare them to each other. And I understand the stock market. So it wasn't just getting lucky and having Bitcoin before Bitcoin went bananas. It was also getting smart and then going, I know how to pick stocks. I wonder if I can pick crypto. So I started doing it with my money after about three months, I was making like a couple of hundred percent a week. And a few of my friends who are financial planners and you know, solicitors said, hey, what are you doing these days? I'm like, I'm messing around with crypto. It's kind of like the stock market, except I can make the money in a week that I used to make in a year. 
And my friend said, oh, can you show me how to do it? I said, yeah, you just do this and do this and do this. And they started to do it as well. Again, doing the coin process, simple research, five minutes, finding the good projects. And then they started making money. And that was my partner who said to me, like, I don't have time for this anymore um, because her work was getting busy. She said, can you do it for me? And I'm like, sure, I can do it for you. She's got a low risk profile. I've got a high risk profile because you know, I've been in the industry a long time. So I was running two different exchanges and running her money and my money. And then when my friend phoned me and said, I don't have time for this anymore because my financial planning business is, is getting very busy. Can you run it for me? And I went, no, I can't do that because you're my friend. You know? And friends often have arguments over money. I said, I've known you for 25 years. I'm not touching your money, but I've already taught you how to do it. You go and do it. And he rang me every week for six weeks and said, will you please do it for me? Will you please do it for me? And I'm like, no, it's, it's not worth it. I don't want to lose a 25-year friendship over a couple of grand. And the seventh time he rang me, I said, okay, okay. I'll only do it if we had a complex legal structure with agreements, disclaimers, we form a company, you put in 10 grand, I put in 10 grand, this sort of stuff. And he said, you do whatever you got to do. So the next day I went to the accountant and said, I want to start this legal structure where we can put money in. It's got to be a unit trust. It's got to have this and this. And he's like, oh, we need the solicitor. So the solicitor comes in and I said, I want to do this and this and this and this. And the solicitor said, oh, what are you doing this for? And I said, I'm creating like a mutual fund, but for cryptocurrency, you know, so we can actually have different investments in there. And the accountant said, oh, I'll put 10 grand into that. And the solicitors went, oh, I'll put 10 grand into that. And I'm like, this is really interesting because these guys are usually very low risk profile. Accountants never invest in anything if you don't know any accounts. So I said to the guys, okay, we've got like two financial planners, two solicitors, one accountant. We'll run this fund for a year. If it does well, we'll launch it to the public. If it doesn't do well, we'll just put it in the bottom drawer and we won't tell anyone that it ever existed because we'll be too embarrassed if we lost our money. And after 12 months, we were just going hammer and tongs and making money. Everybody was happy. We diversified. So we did have some little ups and downs, but over the 12 months, we'd grown. And then we decided to launch it to the public as the first world's first diversified crypto fund. And since then, we've launched a couple of other funds because some people like the middle of the road, like what they call the balanced fund. Some people want a very, very safe fund that's good for grandma, no ups, no downs, it just pays 5% interest. And some young whippersnappers are like, I'm 22 years old, I want to put five grand in this thing. And if it triples overnight, great. And if I lose it all, I don't care. So, okay, so we've got small, medium and large and we can cater for a few people. Because when, when Vanguard and BlackRock and these guys launched their crypto funds, you know, they had one fund. And then a couple of years later, they added a couple more, like a couple more. And I think now, what's, what's Vanguard got? Like 10,000 different funds. Hi, Jerry. It was great to hear uh, the story behind how Boston Trading Co came about. So um, who would you say it's, it's, it's best catered towards uh, in terms of investing? I think um, like in, in Australia, I think it's 85% of people have actually got a, a managed fund rather than doing their own stock market investment. In the US, it's 90% of people have got, their own, have got a managed fund rather than doing their own stock market investment because most of us are busy. Most of us don't have a lot of time on our hands and some people just simply don't want to learn. I don't want to learn how my car works. I don't want to tune my own car view or adjust the timing or the spark plugs. I'm just like, it's got those things and I'll take it to the mechanic. So realistically, there's, there's some people, and it'll be different for stage of life. So if you're, if you're young and single, you have plenty of time on your hands, then you can do the research. You can actually learn how we buy our own and cryptos, how we, how we invest in the stock market and how we do it successfully and safely. You've got plenty of time. But then five years down the track, 10 years down the track, once you've got a mortgage, once you've got a well-paying job, once you've got three kids under your feet, you don't have time to do it yourself anymore. And that's when you start to outsource things. We've seen an explosion in, in outsourcing. People get someone to not only water their lawn and walk their dogs, but also to do the cooking for them. You know, you have these meal delivery packages and that sort of stuff. So people who are getting to the stage where they don't have time, that's where we come in. People who want to do it themselves, we can also teach them how to do it. So at least they can do it safely. That's the minimum because so many people have lost money by investing into the wrong stocks at the wrong time or the wrong crypto at the wrong time. Got you. So, for example, if I had five thousand dollars and 
would you start looking at my risk profile, for example, like if I was a higher risk or more conservative and advise me as to which fund to go into? Like what, what exactly do you do? Uh, that's, that's a great question because, you know, traditional financial planning, as I say, I've been a financial planner for 30 years, uh, traditional financial planners aren't licensed to give advice on crypto because there's, there's currently no legislation around that. So when the legislation comes in, we expect it to be based on the same legislation that is around stocks and shares. So yeah, it will involve sitting down with you, looking at your risk profile, finding out what you're comfortable with, and then saying, again, do you have time? Do you want to manage your own portfolio of stocks and shares? And you know, if there's 10 properties that you can invest into, would you like to get one? Would you like to get all 10 and then pay someone to manage the properties for you? So it's, it's kind of, again, a stage of life thing and that will change. So every year we sit down again and say, hey, what's your risk profile this year? It might be higher because you've been reading a lot more articles about how the market works and understanding crypto and understanding stocks and shares, or it might be lower because of something that's gone on in your personal life. So there's no set and forget. and There's no perfect one size fits all hat for everyone. It's something that you do in conjunction with your financial advisor over time as your situation changes. Uh, so, Jeremy, how is um, the, the, a, a mutual fund different to a traditional managed investment fund? The, the crypto market is basically the stock market on steroids. Usually, like if, if you're buying a property, you might have to wait five or seven years for that property to double in value. If you're buying you know, in, a, in a, a different stock mutual fund or if you're buying well on the stock market, you might double your money in two or three years, sometimes 20 years, depends on the company. It's possible to double your money in six months in the crypto market, but it's also possible to lose all of that money in six months. So it's basically a lot faster. And this is why we say to people and most financial advisors will tell you, your allocation to crypto in your portfolio should be maybe 5%, 10% absolute maximum, because it is possible to see it half. Most of us have seen the chart where Bitcoin went from $70,000 to like $10,000, you know, and that's happened seven or eight times throughout Bitcoin's 14 year history. So those drops can be pretty scary, but when the, when the crypto market goes down, there's obviously stocks are going up, properties going up, so you balance yourself out. And then, you know, when crypto takes off again and you see those gains where it goes from 6,000 to 40,000, then you can actually say, I've got a chunk of that rather than saying I avoided the entire area because it was just too scary for me. So it's just taking, taking small risks. And again, it's not the risk that you're going to lose all the money. It's just the risk that money is not going to be there when you want it because we have, you know, we have incidents where the stock market will crash and it takes a little while to recover. We have incidents where Bitcoin will crash and it takes a little while to recover. And if the interest rates are going up in your country, property market's going to go down. It might stay down for a year or two but it will recover. You've just got to hang in there. And that's why we have the different balances. In any, any good mutual fund should have you know, fixed interest like bonds or debts, should have property, should have stocks and shares. And now we're saying you should have a five to 10% allocation of crypto. Perfect. So if you were summing up in one sentence, how would you say the Boston Trading Fund makes a difference to investors? Uh, we say it's making crypto safe and simple. That's the easiest way. That's why most people invest into a mutual fund because they don't want to do the research. They don't want to have to worry about it. If you buy one stock in one market, you're going to be sweating every night thinking that's going to go down. But if you've got 25 different investments, you can relax and someone's taking care of it. Perfect. That sounds great. And so if I want to invest in one or more of your funds, uh, what would I do? Uh, easiest way is just go bostontrading.co. That's not .com, just .co, but bostontrading.co. Um, and I would say most people, if you have a look at the blog site first, before you go and give me all your money, I don't worry about the money, have a look at the blog. We've got five years of newsletters there. So you can go back in September 2019, before the pandemic, what were we saying to investors? What were we investing into? Looking at January 2018, when the crypto market crashed, what were we saying back then? So you've got to feel comfortable with the fund manager. I, I can say, oh, I'm going to make you 10,000% every week, but that's going to be a lie, of course. And you might not like the fund manager's style. 
we educate our people. And at the end of the day, we don't really care whether you invest with us or whether you do it yourself. If you follow our method, you'll do it safely, you'll do it simply, and you'll love the industry. There's people who have sworn off stocks and shares or sworn off properties because they bought the wrong one at the wrong time. They sold their property during the GFC or they sold their stocks after the plane crash and they swear off the entire industry. There are people who have been burned by different cryptocurrency projects as well, but that's no reason to swear off the entire industry or literally throwing out the baby with the bathwater. We want to educate you so you feel comfortable and then we're quite happy to do it for you or we're quite happy to teach you how to do it. Now, bostontrading.co is the one where we do it for you and charge you 2% a year. Or Crillionaire.com is where we just give you all the free education and you go off and do it yourself. Perfect. So I've gone on to both the websites and I love what I see. Uh, what, what's my first step to get involved with you? Uh, one, once you've read through the blogs, if you're feeling comfortable, um, as so with, with Crillionaire, you can do it yourself. There's instructions for how to set up wallets and how to buy your first crypto. There's even a lot of crypto that you can get for free. So those people who love getting their steps in, like Andrew running around the golf course, uh, they can actually get paid free free crypto for doing that. Or people like me who love spending money in, on my you know, Visa crypto card can get cash back every time you shop. So if you want free crypto, cheap crypto, do-it-yourself crypto on Krillionaire.com. There's all the instructions there. If you want someone to do it for you, then there's just a button, depending on whether you're an accountant or a financial planner um, or whether you're just a a regular person. Um, there's, there's two things there. One's for, one's for financial professionals, I think, or advisors, um, and one's for investors. So just click on invest. We've got bank accounts in, I think, 61 different countries. So you transfer money into our bank account, take the screenshot so we know it was you, because obviously there's money going in and out all the time. We're not going to know it's your money unless you tell us. And then we'll actually walk you through the steps of setting up a wallet putting the coins in your wallet and every month we're going to update you here's what's going on in the stock market here's what's going on in the crypto market here's how that affects you and this is what your balance is so you can keep tabbed on everything all the time excellent sounds great well thanks very much for your time today jeremy it's great to learn uh, so much about you and about boston trading co and uh, we look forward to speaking to you again soon thank you well there it is guys i hope you enjoyed this web3 tv episode if you've got any questions, leave them in the comments below. And remember, if you'd like to watch every episode of Web3 TV, visit the link below or subscribe to our channel. And remember to hit the bell icon so that we can notify you every time a new episode is released. I'm Andrew McComb, and I look forward to sharing more inspiring Web3 TV episodes making a difference to the world. I'll see you soon.